Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And uh, welcome to another um, mentoring interview with a Trading 180 uh, trader. Um, this uh, episode, I have Roger with me. Uh, welcome, Roger. Hey, Leon, how you doing today? Yeah, doing really well. How you doing? Doing good. Doing yeah. good. Brilliant, brilliant. So um, I just wanted to get your, I guess, interview, I guess, uh, an experience, your experience and um, just your opinion and, uh, you know, how you found your time at Trading 180 um, and what it's done with your trading and, um, you know, the process and where you are now, as well as maybe just, a, I guess, a trade that you've taken recently that was profitable and Again, like I said, just general your over, overall experience with uh, with being in the Trading 180 group and the mentoring. So um, just a quick, I uh, guess, uh, background check with you as far as how did you get into um, trading Forex and uh, how long have you been trading uh, Forex, you know, before maybe meeting me and joining Trading 180? Yeah, uh, so, I mean, I, I've been you know, trading for as long as I can remember. Uh, you know, I, I got into trading really when um, I was working scrapyard security in the middle of the night. I had nothing else to do, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I really got involved in everything, you know, stocks, options, ETFs, Forex. Uh, I mean, you name the product, I've probably messed with it at some point. Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, just devouring every book I could devour, you know, devouring hours and hours of YouTube video, just mm -hmm. just jumping in out of everything. Um, and, you know, throughout that entire time, you know, I, I definitely had losing periods. I had break even periods, maybe a profitable period, you know, just kind of all over the board. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, you know, um, then at some point, I, I don't even know how. I'm sure it was through a YouTube video. I, I found trading 180. I, I think at the time, you know, I was really starting. My mindset was really shifting out of technicals, and and I was starting to understand that technicals were, uh, you know, an important part, but they couldn't be the driving factor behind my trades. Um, you know, I was also starting to wrap around my mind you know, that for me, at least a better way to trade would be to be in a trade longer mm -hmm. and not necessarily a bunch of little micro trades, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I was starting to wrap my brain around all that. I think I was searching YouTube for fundamentals of Forex, uh, ran into trading 180, um, decided to, to kind of give that a go because I, I was really starting to think, you know, fundamentals have to be a large part of this. Uh, got involved in, in trading 180 and it really helped me to kind of uh, take a step back and understand that everything that I've consumed, it wasn't really necessarily wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it all has truth to it, but, you know, each little piece of knowledge I had collected kind of was teaching its own lesson about how to operate in the markets and, and trading kind of trading 180 kind of really helped me kind of step back and look at that bigger picture and understand why those things matter and how those different things uh, like fundamentals and even the technicals help drive the market in a way and you know what what each part has to play in trading and just really step back and stop getting bogged down in all those little details and just look at the bigger picture Ah, it's brilliant. And, um, you know, we all work, I've spoken to so many traders over the years and um, our journeys are all very similar, right? In a sense that we tend to consume so much. We, we, we I've traded gold, silver, I've, I've tried, you know, bonds and everything, right? You, when, you're, mm -hmm. when you're first beginning. And then there is, I guess, uh, if you do get, you know, you're do lucky enough or are lucky enough to kind of maybe discover just the focus, right? It's 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 more about trying to eliminate the noise, as you said. And even though it does have, um, I guess, uh, it's not necessarily wrong. You definitely have to try to focus on um, and on, on a process, right? And eliminate all of that other stuff that's going on, and really kind of maybe just develop a plan of, of some sort, right? Which is actually, matter of fact, very hard if you're just looking at um, YouTube videos and, uh, you know, TikTok videos all day. Um, yeah. 
you know, so um, we talk about fundamental analysis. And so you were a technical trader that thought to yourself, look, I need to, there's something more than technical analysis, right, at play here. So what, before we guess, maybe get into the fundamental side, what strategies were you kind of trading um, or technical strategies were you trading? Um, do you remember? Yeah, I mean, when I first got into it, I, I think I di- did what everyone does, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, pick up this RSI and this MACD and you're ready to go, right? <laughs> this little risk analysis and you're, you're good, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, definitely started off there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I got big into... Uh, you know, it, that was a mess, <laughs> but, uh, you know, eventually got, um, you know, pulled into the options market, which actually was probably an important step along my journey. Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I sat around with uh, Tasty Trade for a while. Okay. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I think why that was maybe an important step in my journey is because it really taught me that, um, you know, trading is a probabilities game. Yes. You know, nothing is for sure mm-hmm. ever, you know, it's all about what are the probabilities and how does that play out and how does that fit into your, you know, portfolio or management strategy. So I, I think that was a really big step uh, along my way. Um, you know, ultimately though, uh, you know, yeah, I was still being much more technically driven, uh, in my decision-making, it was just teaching me the probabilities game side of it, you know? Uh, so, you know, I, I kinda, you know, moved on from there. Um, and then I, I started thinking, okay, you know, the, the this idea of I'm going to make, you know, uh, you know, a thousand dollars in a day and, and just sit down, you know, with a smaller account or something and, mm-hmm. you know, have like 80 trades in a day or something is ridiculous too. Yeah. Um, I need to start thinking more long-term, you know, to, just to fit with my lifestyle, if nothing else, you know, yeah. uh, and, and I was doing that off of a technical basis still, you know, pure, purely technical, um, and like I said, that, that's kind of when I started to realize that fundamentals have to play a role in this as well, because there's a reason that things are doing what they're doing. There's a reason that, you know, why one technical setup might play out and not another, you know, mm-hmm. th- there's probabilities there, but there's something behind all this has got to be driving it. Big money is not sitting there thinking, oh, look, we have this doji. <laughs> you know, um, they're, they're just not, you know, yeah. they're, they're, there's a big decision at play. And those yeah. are the guys that are moving the market, you know, right. not, not you and me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's kind of, you know, how that was kind of the broad picture of my progression. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, I came to that, um, that same conclusion at some point, I said, you know what, they, they, they can't, the, the, the big banks can't be looking at, you know, pin bars on, you know, against support and resistance and, uh, and indicators to make their financial decisions, right? It's just, right. There's, there's something more than that. And, um, you know, when I, when I learned fundamentals through, um, you know, my uh, friend, uh, uh, Mark Chapman, um, he, you know, uh, we were talking about this is maybe back in 2013 2014 and he was the first person to really kind of spell out i guess the rules to the game right interest rates inflation and uh, gross domestic products is what we generally tend to look at right. so so with that there are there are people out there probably might be listening to this and thinking well you know, well, what's the benefit of, 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 of learning fundamental analysis? Why can't I, is, is, isn't it just best to just learn the technical analysis and um, I'm sure it will, you know, work out in some way, shape or form, which it might, of course. But from, you know, if you were looking to kind of tell somebody as to what the benefits of learning the fundamentals of Forex or anything that they're trading in general, um, what would what would would you say the benefits probably were of um or say probably but what are the benefits of uh of fundamental analysis or adding fundamental analysis to your trading yeah i mean so the way i've kind of internalized it to myself right Mm -hmm. is um i mean really it's kind of like if you listen to the market the market will talk to you 
mm-hmm. you know. Um, and that, that's really the way I, I kind of internalize it a little bit, you know, by getting out there and, you know, watching uh, the fundamentals, uh, reading, uh, you know, about the narratives that are going on, mm-hmm. uh, you know, reading where the evaluations uh put things where, uh, you know, projected inflation rates and, and projected GDP and projected interest rates and, and understanding how those are really the primary drivers and understanding the narratives that are behind those primary drivers. You know, when you start to take all that in and you, you, you kind of let yourself focus a little bit, you know, like we were saying earlier into that inflation, interest rates, GDP, those are your primary drivers. There's plenty of other metrics out there that you could watch, but they all eventually work themselves up to those primary drivers. Dude. So by by watching those and by watching the narratives that are driving those, it's really almost like it's written out there for everyone to see, like the market okay. saying, hey, most likely this is where I'm going. Now, that's mm-hmm. always subject to change. Things mm-hmm. can change in a moment's notice like anything in life. But it really is once you start to really, truly listen and focus, it, to me at least, it, it sounds like it seems like the market's almost telling you like, hey, this is what we're going to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you're absolutely right. I came to that conclusion as well. And I guess it, it it was for me, it was, you know, maybe a, a bit of a longer journey than than um than you guys in a sense that um I think with me, I really ignored fundamental analysis, even though Mark told me, <laughs> yeah, the way to kind of trade the euro dollar, and he but he didn't emphasize it. He didn't really kind of say to me, you know, you you've got to do this because obviously it's not financial advice, but he kind of mm-hmm. laid it out on a table. But I think my bias was so still so fundamental, I'm sorry, technically driven. I was buying, right? I was buying. If you go to 2014, 2013, 2014, 2015, right? And you look at a chart of the euro dollar and the drop, I think it must have been about a thousand, maybe 2000 pips. I was still continuing to try to buy in that drop because I was totally unaware of the, the, what the market was actually saying, right? What the, the, the mm-hmm. narrative was. And when I look back on the, all the news articles from back then, it was literally as clear as day. It was a no-brainer, right? right? <laughs> it's it's mm-hmm. a no-brainer that, you, that, you know, I should have been going short and never taking any long trades, right? Never in a, in, in a month of Sunday should I have been doing that, right? And, so, and that's what blew me away is just how really crystal clear it can be yeah. when you start to listen you know yes, exactly <laughs> exactly and um I, I i guess as well i had to i asked this question to jar bread because there's a there's a general conspiracy i think or there's this narrative that the, the 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 banks are out to mislead you and send and make you trade in the wrong direction etc um but we the way that we read the news and the, and the things that we focus on and the narratives that we focus on. And I guess where we get our information from, you know, from bank analysis, um, it's in fact quite clear and they actually tell you which way they're trading. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they, so, so, so from, from that perspective, would you say that, you know, making up your own, say making up your own, but um, coming to your own fundamental analysis, right? When you, when you basically look at GDP, interest rates and inflation, and then you come with, come up with your own trade idea, how helpful has, I guess, the forecasts been from the banks, as well as even the fundamental analysis spreadsheet in um, giving you the confidence to hold trades um, and just have confidence in your overall trade idea? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, that that's huge because, you know, yeah, you're exactly right. You know, it's it's looking at all the information that's out there and, you know, kind of coming up with that idea. Uh, but if that was all that was, you know, if all I had to go on was, uh, you know, r- reading articles and the narratives and looking at the interest rates, inflation rates and GDP, mm-hmm. if if something was kind of going against my idea, you know, I, I'm almost sure 
I would get that little bit of, uh, you know, Nick to my confidence in it, you know, after a while, you know, Mm -hmm. especially if I get stopped out one or two times trying to get into a position, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would definitely have my confidence knocked, but, uh, you know, by seeing that, you know, by seeing those bank forecasts and what the banks are doing and, and what, uh, you know, I mean, they literally put out their what their trades are sometimes, you know, like, this is where we're at. This is yeah. what we're doing, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. you know, by seeing that, like, OK, they're literally risking like millions and billions of dollars on this position and they're holding true. Um, you know, that that kind of gives you a lot of confidence to say, hey, my few hundred dollars that I got out mm-hmm. there is fine. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And and also is, I guess, is a bit of a feedback loop, right? Because right. the more ideas you come up with when it comes to, you know, understanding, you know, monetary policy and what the central banks are doing and attempting to do um, before you read the bank analysis and forecasts and then going to read the bank forecast and analysis and then they agree actually with your idea or your idea agrees with their idea you know it 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 creates that feedback loop that you're actually developing the idea before you even see the banks you know right um and the banks are on the same you're on the same page with the banks right so how good of a feeling has that been that you're actually you're generally trading in the same direction as the banks Oh yeah, no, I mean that, that that's kind of been mind opening to me too, and that that's kind of what's given me the confidence to say, like, listen, I mean, the market really is telling you what it's doing because yeah, yeah. What, once you understand those primary drivers and how they play in, mm. uh, and, and you know, yeah, it, it's it doesn't take a lot to start to understand what's going on behind the scenes, mm-hmm. and then you know, yeah, it's it's really confidence boosting to say like, Hey, I had this, you know, I'm on the same page as, you know, these big banks with these huge analysts, you know, Mm -hmm. just by collecting the little information I was able to collect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so when it comes to the, um, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet that we, uh, that we use in trading 180, how, um, how helpful have you, uh, found that in, I guess, simplifying the fundamental process? Because, the fundamentals, I guess, when you're first coming into learning about fundamental analysis in the way that we do, um, can be very overwhelming, right? There's lots of things to look at, so much data points here and there. You know, you go into Forex Factory and it's all these different things to kind of look at. But um, from, a, from a simplification, as well as, um, I guess, the effectiveness of the uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet, how have you found it? the biggest thing I've got out of the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, I think, is probably just its ability to just keep me grounded and mm-hmm. keep me focused. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not that I'm looking at it every single day or anything like that. But, you know, you know, you have the weekly meetings and this fundamental analysis spreadsheet comes up in those weekly meetings every time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, on one end, it kind of feels like, OK, this is on repeat. But on the other <laughs> end, the fact that it's on repeat is really helpful, at least when you're starting to get into this, because uh, it really helps you to stay like, remember, Roger, this is what we're focusing on. This, Mm. this is what you need to focus on. Stop, you know, letting yourself get distracted about how, you know, there's this number coming out or this number coming out or Mm. this, like, these are the fundamental drivers. All that other stuff is fine. It's not that it's not useful or, or whatever, but it all comes down to this you know, everything filters into this. Yeah. Um, so it, it's been huge to me from that perspective to kind of just keep me grounded and keep me focused. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That's um, that's a really good, um, I guess, a, an eye opener. Like you say, I haven't heard that before. And it, like you said, keeping you grounded, keeping you focused on really the divergent pairs, right? The, trying to trade the best pairs we can, the one versus the eights. And, uh, you know, and, um, and again, like you said, just focusing on, what we really need to focus on eliminating a lot of the uh, other things that aren't necessarily, um, you know, necessary to, to, to our trading. Although it does add and all roads kind of lead to GDP interest rates and inflation. Right. But if you focus on those main three things, we should know what the banks want to do with, you know, interest rates and monetary policy. Therefore we're just, 
you know, we can kind of predict these medium to longer term trends, right? We see them play out right. in the market. So, so, um, so yeah, just shifting gears a little bit. Um, so mentoring um, in the Trading 180 uh, group, would you say that you may have figured this stuff out without mentoring and Trading 180 possibly? Um, you know, I, I probably would have, but it would have probably been another 20 years down the road. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like because of all, because of how easily distracted I, I was being through my learning process, right. um, I'm sure it would have been much, much further down the road. Uh, you, you know, I'm sure I would have got there. You yeah. know, I, I was starting to think in the right direction, which is how I found trading 180. Uh, but I'm sure it would have taken me much, much longer. I, I've been with trading 180 and I just checked a few minutes ago uh, for almost a year in about 10 days. Wow. Um, and in that, you know, so the way I look at it is, um, you know, I've been able to get in maybe 10, 20 years of, you know, pain <laughs> into, you know, a year and end up in the same place. Brilliant. <clears throat> that is fan. That is fantastic, man. That's a great way to, uh, to kind of look at it. And you're right. Um, you know, mentoring, I was mentored, um, as I mentioned before, and, um, I had, a, you know, I remember having a conversation with Mark and it, you know, it was, it was pretty much like, it was that light bulb moment where you realize you're just cutting out so much time searching and once you once you have somebody who is showing you the path you know the the, the, the i guess the shortest distance between two points is a straight line right so right. if 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 you're if 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 i want to be you know profitable what's the shortest way i can get to be you know profitable and if a mentor is showing you look this is the way right you you, you don't have to go off that path or go look that direction or do this strategy just do this follow this process and the shortest distance between a to z is going to be you know just the following the process right right and i have to you know i have to take a minute to to say a thank you to you too you know yeah. personally because um you know when i when i initially came on board you know i i think i sent you a lot of questions like you know well what about you know money supply and what about this and what about that and what about this yes. and you know you really kind of help show me that yes all that stuff you know does play its part but you know you really helped me to understand how that all comes down to you know inflation gdp and interest yeah. rates yeah and you know for me understanding is a huge huge thing you know i mm. i am not the type of person that just follow someone's instructions blindly you know i always want to know the why of everything yeah. Yeah. and uh so the, it was very very helpful um you know with how responsive you were uh to answering some of those questions and, and that kind of helped me be able to answer some of my own questions that i had later on myself because i'm thinking like well this is the way you know this is the way it was explained to me for this and this mm -hmm. so you know, if I, if I had gone to Leon, you know, this is what it's, you know, I know what he's going to yeah. say. <laughs> you know what I mean? uh, so it, it kind of really helped accelerate, you know, that, that thinking process for me about understanding why it is that we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Um, so one of your aha moments while being, I guess, in, in, uh, trading 180, um, what would you say that probably was, whether it was a fundamental thing, a technical thing? What would you say when when you kind of learned it or, or maybe it was said or you heard it or you read it in maybe the, the, the Discord group that you were like, ah, and it really kind of, you know, enlightened you in that sense? Um, well, I'll go with my gut reaction to that question and not, not try to dig too much in it because I'm sure I would get myself crazy. But <laughs> uh, so my, my gut reaction, I think, would be uh, the marriage of technicals to fundamentals. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the things I struggle with is even when I did start to realize that fundamentals had a big part to play in it, you know, part of me felt like it was just like, well, if fundamentally it's supposed to go up, just buy it. Forget about it. Well, I mean, that leaves you open to a lot of risk, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, so that's not really a great way to go. And, you mm -hmm. know, I'd already learned from experience that going purely technically 
driven and probabilities driven uh, from a, you know, math probability driven, uh, you know, wasn't really the way to go either because mm -hmm. you were completely ignoring what the market was doing under the hood, mm -hmm. you know? So it was really the marriage of those two and like, okay, yes, fundamentally we can have an idea of what's going on under the hood and we can have an idea of uh, market direction on certain pairs. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't just say, okay, we know it's going South, so we're going to sell, you know, uh, that, that leaves you open to a lot of risk. You have a lot of risk management issues then, you know, huge stops. Um, you know, it, it's not, not really going great. So uh, then learning that that's, that's where, you know, some of that technical information comes in, like, well, where is, you know, a good place from a risk reward perspective to, to enter a trade that's going to fit, you know, the fundamental, uh, information that I have. And then, you know, uh, you know, just the technicality of, how to enter that position and exit that position, I think was huge for me too, you know, um, understanding, you know, when I should be taking some profits and when I should be holding, you know, I mean, essentially if I, I, I the way I feel at least that if you do a trade, right. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to immediately the very next day zoom to your final target zone. Right. And, and you get all this profit. Um, you know, you can, kind of take some profits off the way, maybe a little bit early to get yourself in a nice position, which I almost call just financing my trade, right? Yes, um, it gets me into a risk-free position on that trade. And, you know, I have the banks backing me up saying, yes, it, this is where this pair is probably ultimately going in XYZ mm -hmm. timeframe. Yeah. And I can leave the rest of it run. And then, you know what, if it pulls back a little bit, I'm not going to panic yeah. feeling like, I have to take that little bit I have running off the table mm. because, hey, this is just another opportunity for me to finance yet another trade yeah. and add a little bit more to that longer running trade that I have going on yeah. and, and just kind of slowly build into those positions as you get a chance. So and I really have to say, I guess, um, it was really that marriage of the technicals and the fundamentals and, and how to put the two of them together and how to actually manage a trade. Yeah. Um, those, I think, were were um, the pieces that may have taken me a lot longer to put together uh, had I joined Trading 180. Brilliant, mate. That is that is fantastic. And um, again, I had that, I guess, that same, you know, uh, again, the same kind of epiphany where, you know, it occurred to me that after that long drop, you know, on that euro dollar, um, that I should have been going short. And I look back on it and I thought to myself, oh, my days, if only I had just gone short rather than trying to pick every single bottom, you know, with the fundamentals, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you say, you, you come to that realisation that if you can marry the two, right, the two go hand in hand and just understanding the two and what they really mean to your trading, as well as obviously the trading psychology side of things, right, and understanding probabilities, the law of large numbers and just really, you know, the uh, the, the behavioural side of, 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 of trading. But um. So we were talking about, for example, earlier, the uh, New Zealand dollar Swiss um, as one of the last trades, uh, last profitable trades, I guess, that you've taken. And um, uh, talk us through, if anyone's listening, talk us through the, I guess, the fundamentals as to why you decided, you know, to take um, positions on this currency pair and, you know, a bit of technicals as to, um, you know, where you were getting in, maybe getting out and taking maybe some profits here and there? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, if you look over the, the past um, while, uh, you know, New Zealand uh, has been, you know, championing the pandemic. Right. Uh, you know, they, they've really been doing well uh, with handling the pandemic. Um, you know, they're they're continuing uh, to get people, which, which is basically let them stay open wow. uh, for a lot more than some other countries. And, you know, that's that's being reflected in their GDP and wow. in uh, their inflations and in their interest rates, um, which has really kept, I think, New Zealand a strong contender mm -hmm. uh, with, with some of the other currencies over the last little while. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in in stark contrast you know uh the swiss franc it 
it's really been been struggling and i i think i've you know i don't remember everything that i've been reading about swiss frank but you know they've had kind of a myriad of troubles um mm-hmm. you know i think they were having you know they've been having some troubles with with europe and you know the fact that i'm yeah, saying yeah. I, I think and i recall a little bit I, I think just goes to show that you know the narrative um you know helps you understand what's going on with the inflation gdp and interest rates and that's really what i'm focusing on right yeah. i'm not trying to remember every last detail that i read in an article uh, but that's helping you know create in the back of your mind you know what's going on with the inflation rate interest rates mm-hmm. and gdp why that stuff's happening mm-hmm. uh, so it, you know it gives you that general idea of how those do those two countries now are really you know, one's running up the ladder and the other one's falling down the ladder, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that creates that divergence. That's exactly. Um, it, right? You know, so fundamentally to me that that's saying, hey, the, the New Zealand Swiss freight here is a buy. And then, you know, you look at your bank forecasts and, uh, you know, I think they're calling, you know, for it to get up to that, um, you know, 65, 62 area. 65, 62, somewhere around here. Yeah, I think it's somewhere up in there. I don't okay. have it in front of now, but um, you know, and you can look at that on the technical chart too, and you can yeah. say, "Hey, I, I can see how that would play out." You yeah. know, yeah. Um, so now, now you, now you, you know, you can look at the this chart now from a technical perspective a little bit. Now, since you have that that fundamental background, mm-hmm. and you can say. Okay, I mean, we we seem to be forming a little bit of a bottom here, you know, consolidating in here. Um, now, uh, you know, where where can I find those deep discounts? Uh, yeah. You know, you know, trading on eighty. You know, we would we talk about stop hunts and CPRs and mm-hmm. and look for those. But you know, really, I, I'm I'm just looking for give me some discounts in here. You know, give me some dips. Uh, at the bottom of this range, give me a chance to build into a position, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I can kind of take some profits along the way. So I'm still making a little bit of money while while I wait for this position to really take off. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I have the confidence that it will take off because of those bank forecasts, because of inflation rates, interest rates and GDP, because of the narrative. Yeah. You know, I, I have pretty strong confidence that this will take off. And even if it doesn't, honestly that's fine too i'm not going to make as much money on this but i am still taking profits along the way little by little as i continue to add to a a larger longer term position Mm -hmm. you know waiting for that move up to finally happen so this has been a very interesting fun trade for me and i look forward to see how it ultimately plays out but regardless uh, i've made money off this trade no matter what happens at this point and that and that is brilliant right because um, you know, fundamentally, you, you know which direction you do want to trade, right? You, you, you're literally, like you say, looking to buy, um, you know, in just going one direction. You're not worried about prices coming down and trying to, you know, trying to get in on that move, right? You're looking at right. saying, you know, the, the New Zealand dollar um, is seen as a bargain at this at this point here, right? Now, right. if prices ever come back down to somewhere around where this is, and this was provably a bargain, yeah you just want to look for potential buy trades right you know this is a bargain ended up being a buy prices come back down again prices ended up being a buy and it makes i guess the trading process a lot easier right right and and you know what i I, you know i probably not you know the 100 best you know the 100 percent best you know technician in the world or whatever mm-hmm. um you know th- there, there was a dip there between like the 15th and the 20th mm-hmm. um that didn't quite come down to the bottom of the range 15th uh, and the 20th, uh it, what was that last year 15th 20th yet yeah, just over to your right a little bit more okay to the right the, the next dip to your right oh here yeah right there that little one right there yeah you know i i i got you know, I got stopped out on that one. That's, but you know, really it's fine because yeah. I made a little bit of profits on the trade before yeah. while I'm building this big position, even on that position right there. Um, I think I took a little bit of profit, even though it didn't go the way I expected it to. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I didn't get to keep my longer term build on the position on there, hmm. but that was fine. I still made some profit on it and it came hmm. down and gave me even a bigger discount exactly. to be set up for the bigger move later on. So brilliant. 
that. It, it's that. a win, win, win. You yes. know, <laughs> and it and it is. You know, because a lot of traders, and I used to do this myself, right? You're looking at. You know, if prices are going higher, you want to sell at resistance. If prices are going lower, you want to buy at support or demand, for example, or supply. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if although that sounds great and there's loads of YouTubers and social media people telling you to do this, if it was that simple, I mean, you know, I would say I'm not the most, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I I, I know how to trade support and resistance, right? We're not trading right. support and resistance. Like, so so why hasn't this been a successful strategy? There's got to be something more to it, right? There's got to be filters involved in, in right. this. And uh, like you say, like, uh, and as we've been saying, it's more to do with the fundamental bias, right? It's, it's to understand which direction we're looking at, but also as well, understanding when, um, certain price is actually now a, a bit of a bargain, right? If we lose this trade, it's okay. Don't worry because has the narrative changed? Is there is maybe is risk off coming more into the market? Yes or no? Right. If it's not, and prices are going down, that's it. That's just an even better bargain for a, for a, for a, for a nicer trade. Same thing here, right? Right. But that's all it is, and it's coming down again. And in, and as people can probably they're watching this on on YouTube or or anything like that. I've got an alert here waiting for a bit of a stop hunt. So I'm I'm on the same. I'm 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 literally looking at the same trade as Roger. Um, and you know we've got our fundamental bias, and we're just patient. Well, I'm a bit more patient than Roger, but but um, or I should say Roger's a bit more patient than me in a sense. Well, I don't know. Well, um, <laughs> I think I'd be jumping out a little bit sooner than your little red line there, but <laughs> but 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 nevertheless, you know, we we've got our fundamental bias, right? We're not going to always enter into the same trades and the exact, um, you know, st uh, 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 entries and stop losses. That's not the point in this, right? The point is is to for for Roger for myself to come to the same conclusions and how we enter is how we enter, but we're independent in a sense that we've we've um we're not taking the same trades but we understand where prices should eventually want to go in the future and uh, as long as we both you know profit from this in the way that we do this is what we're you know trying to do at trading 180 we're not trying to create robots right we're trying to create independently profitable traders and if i was to you know suddenly for example just leave or god forbid something happened to me you know I guess I guess I'll pose the question, Roger. You would pretty much be okay, right? You wouldn't necessarily be relying on myself. Oh yeah, no, I I think you know you you've definitely succeeded on that, and I, I'm sure I would be okay. I mean, you'd be sorely missed, and I would uh, <laughs> you know, miss the community, and yeah. uh, you know, like I said, the community definitely helps keep me grounded. But you know, the longer and longer I'm, I'm with the group, and uh, you know, the more and more grounded I become, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And, um, and so uh, I guess to wrap the interview up is, is um, if anyone is listening out there who is undecided about joining Trading 180 and what they're potentially going to get out of it, if anything, right, because some traders may not, it's not for everybody, but what would you, what message would you say to those people who are maybe undecided about joining Trading 180? Um, I, I, I think I would say, you know, if, I guess that's a hard one to answer, but um, I, I would say that this is a good place, especially if you've been building a knowledge base prior mm. to really start to bring everything that you've learned in prior. It's not useless. It wasn't a waste of time. It was needed experience and needed knowledge. Uh, but this is a good place where it's time to say, okay, I'm going to take all that. I'm going to kind of organize it in my mind and uh, learn how to really focus it on the things that are really driving those markets uh, and, um, you know, take that into success from there. I mean, like you said, you and I aren't going to take the exact same trades. This isn't, you know, a system like you would find on YouTube that says, you know, wait for this and see this and then do that. It's not that, you know, it, it's learning how to take our individual styles, but set a framework up around them mm -hmm. and understanding how the fundamentals are driving those things so that, you know, we're trading the same directions. We're trading the same kind of things, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit different from each other, but mm -hmm. um, you know, this, this kind of just helps bring everything that we've learned in the past together in a good uh, package. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
Thank you so much, Roger. I really appreciate the uh, the interview and your time. Um, you know, a really heartfelt thank you for it and just for your experience and your opinion on Trading 180, the mentorship and uh, where you are and how you look at the markets. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Glad, glad to have given the time. Thank you thank for having you. me. All right. Take care, mate. Yep. Okay.